Warren Buffett said, if you don't find a way to make money while you're asleep, then you will work until you die. In this video, in less than five minutes, I'm gonna explain the what, why, and how of pensions so that you don't have to work till you die. I'm Jason Butler, and I'm a fully qualified chartered financial planner and a personal finance expert with over 30 years experience of both advising people on their money and also going on my own wealth planning journey. And if you enjoy this video, please like it below and make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Now, when we talk about the term pensions, what we really mean is converting your human capital, that's the money that you earn through trading your time and your resources and your knowledge and skills, um, and converting it into financial capital, money that you can live off when you either can't or no longer want to work. Now, there are three basic types of pension plans. They are the state pension, defined benefit pensions, and defined contribution pensions. And I'm gonna be giving you a very brief overview on all three of those so you understand how they fit together. Now in the UK, the basic state pension for anyone retiring after 2016 is a maximum of about 9,300 pounds per annum. Now in order to qualify for any basic state pension, you need at least 10 years national insurance contributions or to be credited as if you have made them. And to get the maximum, you need 35 years of national insurance contributions or to be credited as if you've made them. Now this formula on screen will help you work out very roughly what you can expect to get as a state pension. So you take 9340, that's the maximum state pension, divide it by 35, and times it by the number of years that you think you have credits for. So in the example of someone with 25 years national insurance contributions, they can expect a pension of about 6,600 from the state. You can get your own state pension forecast by visiting the link which is shown on screen now. Now the state pension age is currently 66, but it's due to be rising to 68 over the coming years and it could well be even later than that for younger people. To find your own state pension age, check out the link below. Now defined benefit pension schemes, you earn a guaranteed amount of income at the scheme pension age each year that you work for your employer. Now these are most prevalent in the public sector, so that's the NHS, teachers, civil servants, etc. But there are still plenty of people who've got deferred benefits with private sector schemes where they might have worked for banks or building societies or other large employers. Now the beauty of defined benefit pensions is there's very little risk to you, the individual, because the employer has to put all the money in the pot to make sure that the scheme can pay out your pension when the time comes for you to draw your pension at whatever the scheme pension age is. Most schemes have a pension age of 65, but there's quite a lot that have an earlier scheme age of 62 or even indeed 60. And some professions like firefighters and police officers can take their benefits even earlier than that. So whether you're continuing to accrue benefits in a guaranteed defined benefits scheme, or you've got benefits built up from a previous employment, that's a very, very valuable benefit. Now defined contribution plans are where you make contributions into a pot which is invested and you use that pot to provide you with an income when you stop working. Now, for every 80 pound that you put in, the government adds 20 pound. And in that situation, if you're an employee, your employer also has to contribute a minimum amount. So in that scenario of 80 pound from you, 20 pound from the government, your employer has to contribute 60 pound. But there are many employers who pay more than that into pension pots and some of them make it a requirement that you have to pay in extra as well to get their extra. Now that's free money. And it's really important if you're an employee that you don't opt out of any workplace pension. If you're self-employed, it's imperative that you squirrel away some money yourself and get the government to add their contribution. And if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you also get additional tax relief on top of that, which makes the contribution even more affordable. Now the key factors which are gonna determine how big your pension pot is with a defined contribution scheme is how much you contribute, for how long, and also the investment returns that you achieve on your money. And that's all down to how the money's invested. Now, most personal pensions or workplace schemes have a default fund, which is invested across a number of asset classes. But it's worth checking out where your money's invested and if you're not happy with the range of investments to make changes. Remember, when it comes to investments, it's always important, particularly if the amounts are larger, to take advice from a regulated financial advisor who can help you marry up the right strategy for your situation. Now, one of the ways to see if you're making enough contributions with a defined contribution pension 
is to take the target amount that you want to have when you want to stop working, so let's say 25,000, and you times it by the factor of 30. So someone who wants 25,000 uh, as retirement income needs to times that by 30, that becomes a pot of 750,000 pounds. Now it's a lot of money I know, but if you're young, you've got many years to build that money up and you can get investments you know, doing the work for you. Now as a rule of thumb, I recommend that people invest 15% of their net household income for the longer term. There are exceptions to this, where if you are looking like you're gonna lose the roof over your head and you have no money for food, then clearly you can't invest. But once you've got your basics sorted of an emergency fund and you've got debt under control and you've got a budget that you can work to, the 15% is the figure that you should be aiming for. If you're very young, you can probably invest a bit less. If you're older and you're trying to make up ground, you probably want to invest more. But the more you save, for the longer you save and the higher the return you get, the bigger pot you're gonna have for life after work. Now, I just want to share with you a quick tactic tax loophole which is perfectly legal and legitimate and the government sanctions this. You can make contributions to a pension up to 100% of your earnings or £3,600 if you don't have any earnings. Now the beauty of this is that you only pay 80% of the contribution so someone who pays the minimum contribution that's allowable it's 2880 from you the government adds tax relief and that becomes 3,600. So you can basically get tax relief on a pension contribution even if you don't pay income tax yourself. So let's give you an example. Let's take Zoe. Zoe earns 8,000 pounds a year, but because the 8,000 pounds is below the 12 and a half thousand pound personal tax allowance at which you don't pay any income tax, Zoe could make a contribution of 6,400 pounds. The government would add 1,600 pounds of tax relief and that becomes 8,000 pounds. And because it's not more than 100% of her earnings, it's allowable. Now there's an upper limit on what you can contribute into pensions and that's up to 40,000 pounds, even if your earnings are higher. The only exception is if you haven't made maximum contributions in previous years, you can roll forward up to £40,000 for each of the previous three years to the current year. So that's a total of £160,000 in the current tax year if you have earnings or your employer can make contributions regardless of how much you earn. Now the earliest that you can take your pension benefits from a defined contribution scheme or an occupational scheme is normally 55. Now that is expected to increase to 57 or even 58 in a few years time, but it's not actually been legislated for. But at the moment, 55 is the earliest unless you're suffering an ill health or disability, which is long term, in which case you can get access to your money. And when you take your money from a defined contribution plan, you can take up to a quarter of it tax free and the remainder of it is taken as a taxable income. And as long as you keep that income below the £12,500 income tax threshold, there'll be no tax on it. Or if you keep it below the threshold for high rate tax, there'll only be basic rate 20% tax on that income. In the meantime, your money grows tax free and is not in your estate for inheritance tax, which is why pensions are particularly attractive for people who have built wealth and who own property, etc. So it's not in your estate in the same way that ISAs are. Now, if you're in any doubt about making contributions or investing your funds or even taking the benefits, particularly when you've built up funds, it's really important and really good value to take professional financial advice from a financial planner who can help you make informed decisions. And it's worth just mentioning that planning for life after work, retirement, pensions, whatever you want to call it, it's not just about putting money in pensions, good as they are. It's also about considering, you know, paying off your home mortgage because that's an enforced form of savings savings and building wealth. It possibly could be buying investment property that you can rent out. It could be building up savings and investments in ISAs and other forms of investment. It could be starting and growing your own business. There's no one perfect way to build wealth, but pension benefits, whether it's your state pension, whether it's building up defined benefits scheme benefits, or whether it's a defined contribution scheme, they should be part of your armory. They should be in your foundation. So it makes sense to make use of the available tax reliefs and opportunities that are there for you. And you might find my other video on investing useful because that might help you make better decisions about investing your pension funds. And if you like this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe below.